boy, this is going to take a minute. Hi, beautiful friends on Bookish Fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, I have a massive unhaul for you. I don't know when the last time that I unhauled books on my channel was, but it's been a minute. And let me tell you that the books have been accumulating. I have a ton to talk to you about today. So grab a snack, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. But really quick, before we jump into the meat of the video, I did want to address a couple of comments that I've received recently on how fast I talk. I received a couple of comments from people asking me to slow down. Basically, they want me to alter the way that I speak to make these videos. And quite frankly, I'm not going to do that. I have been a fast talker the entirety of my life and it just gets worse the more excited or agitated I am. I just talk faster and faster and faster. And that is not something that I'm willing to falsely alter just to make YouTube videos. In fact, this is one of the reasons that YouTube actually has speed settings for their videos. In fact, I am not only a fast talker, I am a fast listener as well. So if I'm listening to an audio audiobook, I'm listening on two times speed. And if I'm watching YouTube, I'm actually increasing the speed to at least 1.5 times. So every single time I watch a YouTube video, I have to go in and manually adjust the speed settings in order to get it to where I want to be. And if I can do that every single time I put on a YouTube video, I'm sure that you can do that as well, only in the opposite direction. YouTube does allow you to slow down the speed of the videos that you are watching. I believe there's like 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, however slow that you need to go in order to get it to a speed that you like. And that is what those controls are there for. So if you find that I talk too fast, if you find that you are missing some things, then I would just highly recommend slowing down the speed of my YouTube video. I'm sorry if that's not the answer that you were wanting. I still do hope that you stick around and enjoy my videos, but I'm not going to be altering the way that I talk in my YouTube videos. All right, now that that's out of the way, we really do need to go ahead and jump into the unhaul because there are so many books here. Now, all of the books that I'm mentioning in this video are eventually going to end up on Pango. It's going to take me quite a while to get all of these books up on Pango, so they're not going to go up instantaneously. If you follow me on there, the link is down below in my description. You will be notified anytime that new books appear in my shop. I will say that by the time this video goes live, some of these will already be up in my Pango shop and they may have already sold. I'm not sure, but you will still be able to see what is available at the time that this video is posted. First, I have a stack full of YA. If you have been around my channel recently, you will know that I've moved almost entirely away from YA, unless it's YA fantasy or sci-fi. I have completely moved away from like YA contemporary of any kind. And that's just because it doesn't provide the substance or the oomph that I'm looking for. Now, some of them do. I'm not saying that all of them don't, but in general, I tend to stay away from that age range now. And I was going through my shelves. And as of right now, I really only have like two shelves full of YA contemporary. I have whittled down those books that I've kept quite severely. But even still, there are books on those shelves that at the time that I read them, I really enjoyed them. And they did mean a lot to me at the time. But now they're just kind of sitting there and I don't have any particular emotional attachment to them. So I've decided to let them go. We're going to start with two Jay Asher books, 13 Reasons Why. I'm sure that y'all know exactly what this one was about. I remember reading this for the first time back when it first came out, or at least close after it came out and I loved it back when I read it. But for the most part, I don't have any emotional attachment to it. I don't remember a ton of what happened in the book. I don't get any kind of joy when I'm looking at it either. And it's just kind of sitting there. I've just been kind of keeping it around because of the positive memories that I had when I read it. And I don't think that I need to do that anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul it. Same with What Light by Jay Asher. I really enjoyed this sweet holiday romance story. In fact, I enjoyed it a lot. I think I gave it probably close to a five stars when I read it. And I still have, again, very positive feelings about this, but I don't need it taking up room on my shelves. It's not something that I'm ever going to reread or revisit. Now y'all know that I'm not a rereader. So that's typically not a criteria I use when I'm deciding on whether or not I'm going to get rid of a book. But I just know that this is not something that I need to keep on my shelves. So it's going to go. Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This was actually the very first Christina Lauren that I ever read. And I think this is their one and only YA. I really enjoyed it when I read it. I thought that it was really well done. It was a solid YA contemporary. But this is another one that I just don't have any emotional feelings for. I don't really remember a whole lot about what happened in here. And I've definitely moved away from Christina Lauren Lauren overall and I've already unhauled some of their adult books and I think you're probably going to be seeing those later in this haul. So this is just going to go ahead and join them. A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. Now I remember really enjoying this when I read it. In fact, I remember recommending it to a few other YouTubers as well who read it and really enjoyed it. This is a harder hitting contemporary that follows the love story between two teens that suffer from a disability of some kind and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was tender and sweet but this is another one that I don't remember almost anything about and I have no emotional attachment to it whatsoever. This is another one that I kept just because I remember really enjoying 
it when I read it and I don't need to keep it for that reason. So I'm going to go ahead and let it go. Similarly, I have You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is another harder hitting YA contemporary between two very different twins and their relationship, especially after one is diagnosed with Huntington's disease, which is a disease that I believe took their mother away from them and how they're coping with that. And I just thought this was very well done. I really enjoyed it at the time that I read it. And like I said, it is harder hitting, which is certainly what I look for in YA contemporaries, especially now if I'm going to pick them up, but I no longer feel the need to hold on to this one. So I'm going to go ahead and let it go. I also have two Jeff Zentner books, The Serpent King and Goodbye Days. Now I know that Jeff Zentner is a pretty well-respected young adult author. In fact, I know that a lot of people who read The Serpent King absolutely love it. And I don't remember being as infatuated with that book as everyone else. I mean, I remember thinking that it was well told. I remember having a decent reading experience with it. I didn't leave the book feeling blown away and it wasn't a five-star read for me. This wasn't either. Both of them definitely cover harder hitting topics. There are some deep, dark things that happen in these stories. And I certainly connected to the emotional resonance that happened in here. But again, I look at these books and I don't feel that emotion anymore. I'm not connected to them in any way. And the details of the book have now escaped me and they're never going to be something that I revisit. So they're going to go. And the final one from this recent stack, these are all books that I've just recently looked at my shelves and have taken off. They're not something that I've been sitting waiting to be unhauled. So this is like the most recent unhaul stack. And the last one, Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I have really enjoyed Morgan Matson in the past. In fact, there are a couple that I'm still keeping on my shelves like Second Chance Summer. I really think that Morgan Matson is a pretty talented YA author and I really understand why she appeals to the YA market, but I have certainly outgrown her. I'm not going to be reading anything that she publishes going forward, obviously, since she primarily specializes in YA contemporary. And this was not her strongest. I did enjoy this when I read it, but this is not my favorite by her. So I'm just going to keep the ones on my shelves that I really, really did enjoy and still have very fond memories of. And I'm going to let this one go. So next, I actually have an Illumicrate special edition, I believe. It is the Illumicrate special edition of The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Now I'm getting rid of this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I missed out on the release of the remainder of the books in the series when they came out from Illumicrate. I got this in a special Cruel Prince dedicated box. It's got this silver foiling on it. I don't think that you can tell with my lights, but it is a nice edition. It's got green pages, but overall I feel it's very basic for a special edition. I don't think that there's anything else special about this story within. I'm not the biggest fan of naked hardcovers, to be honest with y'all. I prefer books that have fancy dust jackets and then maybe something special on the naked hardcover. And since I don't have any of the others in the series, and like I said, I don't think that there's too terribly much else that is special about this. I'm just going to go ahead and let this one go. If I do see special editions released in the future of the set from Illumicrate or Fairy Loot or what have you, I will probably go ahead and jump on that opportunity to get them. And because of that, I really just don't feel the need to hold on to this one anymore. Next, I have The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Like I said, you're probably going to be seeing a handful of their adult releases in this unhaul. This is one that I never read. This is one that I bought when I was still actively reading Christina Lauren, and I have just since given up on them. They have been very hit or miss for me. Their books are typically like two to four stars. Like there's never been a five star read and I'm okay letting them go as authors. And so when I made that decision, I made the decision to unhaul this book as well as some of my least favorite of their adult contemporaries that I have read. So that is why this one is in there. Next, I have the Fairy Loot edition of Forged by Blood by Ahigbor Okusen. And I'm so sorry if I completely butchered that name. This was one of the books that I received in one of their book only adult monthly subscriptions. And it's just one that I really don't have any interest in reading. I think this one might already be up on my Pango. I'm not entirely sure. I've been trying to list these as they come in if I know that I'm not going to read them to give people an opportunity to grab them if they are sad that they missed out on the box. So this one might already be up and I cannot deny that it is absolutely stunning. Y'all, it is truly beautiful. I mean, look at these sprayed edges. Holy cow, this is a beautiful, beautiful book, but it's just not one that I'm going to read. Next, I have The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. So this time last year, I actually purchased a bunch of holiday romances and my goal was to do a try a chapter tag where I tried a chapter, figured out which ones I really wanted to read and then read those. Well, I did the try a chapter, but I never actually ended up reading any of those books. Earlier this year, I did a Christmas in July vlog where I read three of those holiday romances. This was one of them and it was just okay. It was my least favorite of the three that I read and I really don't feel the need to hold on to it. It was very meh, very forgettable. There were a lot of issues that I had with it and so it's going to go. If you can't tell by the name of it, it is actually a Hanukkah romance, not a Christmas romance. And I liked that aspect, but I just overall didn't really care about the romance in general. I have Christmas by the Book by Anne-Marie Ryan. Now this is actually one that I didn't read. I remember when I did the try a chapter that I really, really loved the first chapter of the story. I just loved the vibes that I was getting. It was perfect holiday Christmas vibes. If I remember correctly, this one doesn't actually have an audiobook. I remember going through and searching for some of the audios and I could not find one for this. I don't know if that's changed. I don't know if I'm incorrect, but if it doesn't have an audiobook, I'm not going to read it. And to be honest, even though I really do love Christmassy books, Christmassy romances, I don't need to read a ton of them. One every now and then is fine, but they're never going to be anything that stick with me. And so keeping them on my shelves to read, I just really don't feel the need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go, even though I do think that this is probably the perfect type of book to read during this time of year. Another Christmas romance I have is Making Mine This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones. This is actually an Illumicrate exclusive. It came in their Afterlight box last year, I believe 
believe. And here's the main reason why I'm getting rid of this one, because the synopsis of this is almost exactly like the synopsis of Kiss Her Once for Me. And I can't remember the author of that book off the top of my head. It's about a woman and a man who are fake dating and the woman actually falls for the man's sister. They have almost identical plot lines. They both actually have song lyrics in the title. And I really didn't like Kiss Her Once for Me all that much at all. I think I gave it a three stars and that was probably being a little bit generous. And so that really turned me off to reading this one. Even if this one could be well written and a much better story, I just didn't care. I wasn't interested. And so I'm letting this one go. The Sound of Rain by Greg Olson. This is the first in a detective fiction duology by Greg Olson. This was the very first book by Greg Olson that I ever read and it was just okay. I wasn't super thrilled with the overall plot of the story. I didn't really connect to it at all. And I've made the decision not to continue in the series. I was originally going to just because it's a duology. You know, why not just read the second and final book? But why also waste time on a book that I really don't think that I'm going to love? So I'm getting rid of this and I'm not continuing in the duology. Next, I have Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. I know that this is a very beloved middle grade story. I'm just never going to read it. I keep trying to make myself a middle grade girly and I just cannot. I bought a couple of middle grade stories that really sounded like they were going to be up my alley. Like Nevermore by Jessica Townsend and this one. And I just don't want to read them. I never have the urge to pick them up. I tried to read Nevermore. I got several chapters through and then I DNF'd it. So I was like, you know what? I just need to be authentic to myself and not read middle grade. So this one's going to go. Next, I have the Fairy Loot exclusive edition of Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I kind of got swept up in the hype with this one. Fairy Loot said that they were actually going to be redoing her other releases in this edition. And so I went ahead and picked it up even though I had never read it. And I had actually never read a Margaret Rogerson before, but I have a Sorcery of Thorns on my TBR. I have since read a Sorcery of Thorns and I really did enjoy it. I had a good time, but not enough to continue with the series. And so I didn't pick up the releases of the other books when it came out in this edition. And I don't think I'm going to read this. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it along. And I'm even more okay with it because again, it's just a naked hardcover with, you know, some beautiful gold foiling, gold sprayed edges and things like that. And I think somebody would really love to have this. So I'm going to pass it along. Next, I have the Owl Crate edition of Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. This is another YA series that I'm just not going to be continuing in, even though I do remember having a really good time reading it at the time that I did. It's been a long time since I read this first book and I really just don't feel like going back and doing a recap of it or rereading it or anything to continue in the series, especially as I'm moving away from YA. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this one along as well. Next, I have The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. This was a historical fiction that I really didn't enjoy hardly at all and I'm happy to get rid of it. All right, these next two are actually beautiful special editions that I got not too long ago trying to convince myself that I needed to give this author another chance, but I don't think that I'm going to and I think there are people who would really love to get their hands on these. So I'm going to go ahead and pass them along. First, I have One for My Enemy by Olivia Blake. I mean, just look how stunning this edition is, y'all. I'm not denying that these are absolutely beautiful books. I love the sprayed edges. You actually have a little cutout here and so when you open it, that is the naked hardcover. I mean, this is absolutely stunning, as is Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. Again, you have this foiled cover, naked hardcover. There are the sprayed edges, which I absolutely love. There is the back. And again, you have a cutout. And oh my gosh, I just love those end pages. They are absolutely stunning. But here's the deal. I read The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake, and I barely got through it. I gave it a three stars. It was not what I wanted at all. And I just could not relate to her very pretentious writing. Her books were pretentious in a very non-accessible way. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give the Atlas Paradox a try. I got 100 pages through it and I DNF'd it. And then I saw these and I was like, you know what? I really love the premise of these two books and I really want to give it a try. But then I've heard some other people review it and their complaints about the books were very similar to what I had with the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I can do it. I think that I'm going to go ahead and just turn right around and sell these on Pango. I'm not going to give her another shot because I just don't think she and I are going to vibe. These two books are going to go. And like I said, I know somebody is going to be very, very happy to get their hands on these. Another Christmas book that I'm going to be relinquishing, The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. This is a, just another one that I really don't have any interest in reading. This was another one that during the Try a Chapter vlog series, I just really didn't enjoy all that much. I didn't really connect to it. It was probably one of my least favorite that I read. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this along. Next, I have The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald. This is another one that I enjoyed while I was reading it, but I don't need to keep it. It's not one that I feel any emotional attachment to. So I'm going to go ahead and let it go. A Game of Fate by Scarlett St. Clair. I actually mentioned this recently in the TBR video that I posted, but I read A Touch of Darkness, the very first book in the Hades and Persephone saga, and I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought that I was going to. So I grabbed that first book and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and continue in the series, even though my instinct was telling me you're probably never going to do that. And this was sent to me as a gift as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. And I pulled it as a challenge prompt for November and I just never wanted to read it. By the time I had no other books left on my TBR, I finally got around to picking this up. I only got a couple of chapters in and I was like, you know what? I really don't want to read this. I don't really care. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of this. It's brand new, perfect condition. And I know somebody would love to have it. Another fairy loot edition that I got as part of my adult 
adult book only subscription, Son of Blood and Ruin by Marielle Loris. This, if I remember correctly, is supposed to be like a gender bent Zorro retelling and it is stunning. Y'all, I absolutely love this cover and look at those edges. Holy cow, this is absolutely stunning. I really wish Fairy Loot would save their most stunning editions for books that I'm actually interested in reading. Unfortunately, this is not it. This one could also be on my Pango. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, I try to post these Fairy Loot books on Pango as soon as I get them if I know that I'm not going to read them. But if it's not up now, it will be up soon. Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This was another YA contemporary that I thought was okay. I know that a lot of people really, really loved this story, but I didn't love it nearly as much as her contemporary called Emmy and Oliver. That was like a five stars. It's probably one of my favorite YA contemporaries of all time. This just did not hit the same. And so I don't feel the need to keep it. Another Christmas one I'm getting rid of, The 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless. Again, just really don't feel the need to read all of these Christmas romances. They're all probably going to blend together. They're not going to stick with me. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it since the project that I had in mind for these kind of failed last year. And I'm not going to pick it up again for this year. Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. I actually feel very guilty getting rid of this one because this is a new release from Jojo Moyes. And I remember being really excited to get it. I was very interested in reading this story, but this is one of those books that I'm just never in the mood for. I'm never in the mood for contemporary women's fiction. This is one that I could potentially be swayed to keep. If you have read this story, please let me know. I've only ever read one book by Jojo Moyes. It was Me Before You. I absolutely love that book. And so I wanted to give her another chance. That's why I picked this one up, but I just have never wanted to read it. So you'll have to let me know what you think of the story, but for now, I think it's going to go. Then I have The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. This is a piece of detective fiction for Claire McIntosh, and it just didn't work for me. I've read a couple of Claire McIntoshes in the past that I have enjoyed and I do still have on my shelf, and I would be willing to read more from her in the future, but this just was not it, and I do not plan on continuing in the series. I know that there is at least one other book being released or has been released already for this one, and I'm just not going to continue. Speaking of Olive Blake and the Atlas Six, I have the Fairy Loot edition of the Atlas Six. I can't remember offhand whether I officially decided to unhaul the Illumicree editions of the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. I guess we'll find out as we get closer in this haul. I just remember loving those editions so much and picking them up and I'm having a hard time letting them go even though I don't like this series but I'm for sure going to get rid of this. I do think that this is a beautiful classy understated special edition and again I know somebody will be happy to have it. Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. So I'm going to be honest and say the only reason why I picked this story up was because it was going to satisfy a reading challenge for me to read a book by a Caribbean author I believe is the one that I was trying to satisfy. I have never had any interest in Elizabeth Acevedo especially since she's primarily known for her YA and YA that has written in verse no less and that is just not my thing but this was her first foray into adult so I was like okay let me go ahead and pick it up and give it a shot because if I'm going to like anything by her it's going to be this however there are so many negative reviews about this story it was one of the lowest rated books on my TBR and I really had no interest in reading it from the outset so I'm very sad that I kind of wasted a book of the month credit on this for something that I'm not going to read but I'm just gonna go ahead and let it go a likely story by Lee McMullen Abram this is another one that I haven't read it's one that I got back when I was still an aardvark subscriber for the most part with aardvark I wasn't really impressed with the books that they selected and I just kept selecting every month because they didn't have the skip feature or I was just like you know what let me just get something let me just get something this is probably the only one that was remotely interesting to me but this is another situation where it sat on my shelves for a couple of months and I was like no I don't really want to read that and that is why I try to read book box books as soon as they come in just so they don't linger especially if I went against my instinct and got them anyway and I'm trying to be a lot better about that I don't know if you can relate there are just some books that I look at and I'm like oh I, I guess I could like that let me go ahead and grab it but my instinct is telling me like no you're never going to be in the mood to read that why are you picking it up stop being stupid this is one of those so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it and try to be much better about this in the future I have a bunch more Christmas books here that I'm just going to really quickly run through Once Upon a December by Amy E. Reichert Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayliss One Last Gift by Emily Stone which I did read and I did enjoy The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan and The Christmas Wish by Lindsay Kelk these next two I'm mentioning purely because you are going to see them on Pango but they are actually something that were sent to me as part of a book box that I'm subscribed to and I've already read and own both of them and so that's the only reason why I'm getting rid of them. The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel. Funnily enough, this came in the mail just a couple of days after I actually finished reading this book. Now, if it was one that I didn't already own, I would absolutely be happy to keep this, but I had already read it and I already have a hardcover edition and that's how I prefer my books to be. So this is brand new. I'm going to go ahead and give it away. And then The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Y'all know how I feel about this story. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I'm not getting rid of it because I hate this story. No, I have multiple editions of this book in hardcover. I definitely do not need to keep this. Next, I have the US edition of Strange the Dreamer by Lady. Taylor and the only reason why I'm getting rid of this is because I have the UK edition of both Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares and I actually just recently got the beautiful Illumicrate special editions of these books and they are stunning. I don't need to keep this on my shelves so it's gonna go. The Survivors by Jane Harper. This is one of her standalone novels and I just wasn't super impressed by it. It didn't really leave a lasting impression so it's gonna go. The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. I read this quite a while ago. It was a February 2019 book of the month release. I don't think it's been that long since I've read it but regardless I remember nothing about it. The only thing that I can tell you is that this 
involved a missing sister. And that is it. And so because I remember nothing about it, I'm going to go ahead and let it go. The Key to My Heart by Leah Lewis. I, for the most part, actually really enjoyed this story. It is about a woman who is grieving the loss of her husband from a couple of years ago. She just can't seem to move on. And it's about her kind of finding love again. And I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was sweet, touching, and heartwarming. But again, this is not one that's really truly going to stick with me. And it's not one that I look at and have a deep emotional attachment to. Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne. This was just an okay adult contemporary. This is one that, again, was a decent reading experience, but it didn't necessarily do a whole lot for me. So I'm going to let it go. I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. I was really looking forward to this one. This was supposed to be kind of a more literary take on dark academia, and it was just not well executed. I did not like this one hardly at all. And I was really surprised because I was really expecting to enjoy this one. I think I gave it a three stars. It was not at all what I was hoping it would be. It was entirely too long, and I just need to get rid of it because my feelings for this are definitely on the negative side. Y'all, some of these book stacks are looking pretty precarious. So if you hear a loud crash at some point in this video, it's because they've tumbled over. Next, I have American Fire by Monica Hesse. This is a true crime story that I picked up because it seemed kind of interesting, but I've just lost interest in it. So I'm going to let it go. For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. This is another artwork book that I really just didn't want to get, but I felt obligated to get something. And so I picked this up. This is just another one that I really have no interest in reading. So again, it's going to go. The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Okay, let me go ahead and just back up for a second. This is another book that I bought purely to satisfy a reading challenge. I needed to read a book that was set in Dublin and I was having the hardest time finding a book to read. This was the one that came the closest to piquing my interest. And then by chance, I ended up picking up another book for a TBR and it was set in Dublin. And so I didn't need to read this anymore. So I immediately put it on my unhome pile, but I actually really do like the premise of it. I've heard really good things about it and the author in general. However, for the most part, I have no interest in Emma Donahue as an author. And I really don't like reading books by authors that I have no interest in continuing with or going backwards with. And so I don't know if I should waste my time on this. So I'll let you try to convince me of this one as well. But if you see it on Pango, that just means I decided to go ahead and unhaul it. I distinctly remember talking about these next two in the last unhaul video that I did on my channel. And these were two that I was uncertain about and I was uncertain if I was going to get rid of them. And so they have just been hanging around since that video and I've officially decided to let them go. That is King of Scars and Rule of Wolves, both by Leigh Bardugo. This is kind of a spin-off series to the Grisha trilogy and Six of Crows. As much as I really adore both of those series, I just don't feel the need to continue in it. Like I don't feel like these need to exist. I haven't heard the best things about them. And since I put them in my unhaul pile, I have not thought about them at all. I've basically been living like I've already unhauled them. They're not on my virtual TBR. They are not anywhere. And I have no interest in picking them up. So they are going to go. When I'm Dead by Hannah Morrissey. Yes, this was an October book of the month selection. It's very, very recent. I started reading it just not too long ago, maybe last week. And I got maybe 40%. And I was like, I don't care about this. I don't like this. I don't like the writing style. This isn't grabbing me. I'm not connected to it. I really don't care what happens. And so I'm letting it go. That typically doesn't happen with thrillers because there's typically at least a modicum of interest there and I want to know how it's going to wrap up and I don't feel that way with this one. I've forgotten everything that happened and I don't care to know how it wraps up but if you want to tell me how it wraps up hey that's fine but I am not going to read this so it's gonna go. There it goes. The Chalkman by CJ Tudor. I had this on my TBR for a really long time. I had heard great things about it, but unfortunately it just did not work for me. It was not executed like I thought it was going to be. So I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought that I would. So it's going to go. Next, I have The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. This is actually one that I just recently read and wrapped up on my channel. And it was cute, sweet, touching, heartwarming, but it was like a three stars and I'm not going to remember anything that happened in a couple weeks. So I'm letting it go. Everything All at Once by Katrina Leno. So I read Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno, and that is by far one of my favorite YA contemporaries of all time. I absolutely loved it. And so naturally I wanted to read anything else that Katrina Leno wrote. So I read this and it was okay. I remember liking it for the most part, but it has absolutely not stuck with me. And since that time I have read at least one other Katrina Leno that I did not like, and I've just basically given up. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul this one because I don't have any strong feelings for it. I have kept Summer of Salt. I will always keep Summer of Salt. I wish that it wasn't like a one hit wonder for me with Katrina Leno, but unfortunately it was. So everything else of hers that I have is going to go. Surviving Savannah by Patty Callahan. This was a historical fiction that I read earlier this year and it was okay. It was a decent historical fiction, but nothing mind blowing. And this is another one where all of the details have just basically escaped me. So it's going to go. Next, I have even more holiday romances, Eight Perfect Hours by Leah Lewis, A Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly, and A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. This is probably one that hurts the most just because I think this is one that I was perhaps the most interested in. It seemed like it was really going to be a lot of fun. It definitely seemed like it was going to be the steamiest out of all the holiday romances. But again, as much as I love the concept of these stories, I really would prefer to spend my time on reading things that 
I know are going to give me the emotional reaction that I want that are going to stick with me and become all-time favorites and for the most part I just don't believe that holiday romances have the ability to do that so this is going to go. The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand. I have really enjoyed some of Cynthia Hand's YA contemporaries. I still have a couple of them on my shelves. This is not one that I enjoyed as much as the others and this again is one that I remember almost nothing about whatsoever so I'm going to let somebody else have it. Next I have The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This was a book of the month selection that kind of drew me in with the vibes of it. It's kind of giving me like a little bit of dark academia-esque even though I don't necessarily know if that exactly fits but that was kind of the vibes that I was getting and then I started hearing terrible terrible reviews about this. It was again one of the lowest rated books on my TBR and I know I know I shouldn't let the reviews get to me but when they're overwhelmingly negative and I'm reading some things about what's in the book and I'm like oh yeah I probably wouldn't like that either. I just made a gut decision to go ahead and let this one go. Next I have Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This was a cute YA contemporary. Again don't remember anything that happened. It hasn't stuck with me. Don't feel the need to keep it on my shelves. Next I have this special edition of Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Again this is another naked hardcover and there really isn't too terribly much special about it except for the custom cover which I do enjoy. I think it's beautiful in this purple and this gold foiling. So you have this sword on the front and then the stag on the back and that's literally all that's really special about this one and I really just don't feel the need to hang on to it. So I'm gonna let it go. The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. This was a series that I was interested in starting but unfortunately this felt very mediocre for me. I didn't really connect to the mystery or care about what was happening and I have no interest in continuing with the series so I'm gonna let this one go. The Stolen Heir by Holly Black. I had this on my TBR because I loved the Cruel Prince series for the most part. I really enjoyed book one and two. Book three kind of lost me a little bit but when I found out that she was going to be doing a follow-up duology featuring Oak I really was interested but by the time this was sent to me I was like I don't think that I want to read this. I can't explain it to y'all but there was certainly a switch that was flipped when it came to YA and I've just kind of lost all interest in this but if you enjoyed this if you really think that I would enjoy it too if I liked the Cruel Prince trilogy please let me know. This is another one that I could be tentatively convinced to keep. Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. I was really excited to read this. I thought that it sounded really good like a harder hitting kind of family drama but as I started reading it I did not find myself connecting to it or the characters. So I stopped reading it and I haven't thought about it since. I have not had the urge to pick it up so I think I'm just going to go ahead and call it a day and let it go. The Wilder Women by Ruth Emming Lang. This is another situation where I picked it up because of the vibes. I was really loving the magical vibes of this story and if you have been following my channel this year you will know that speculative fiction has really really been working for me but this again was another one of the lowest rated books on my TBR. It was not getting good reviews and it made me very hesitant to pick this one up. So I think that this is another one that I'm going to go ahead and let go. Next I have All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Cliffoff. This is another one that I remember really enjoying when I read it but I don't remember anything about it so I'm going to let it go. Next I have The Doctor by Nikki Sloan. For a brief time I was subscribed to the book box that Colleen Hoover herself curates and sends out and it's primarily a romance subscription service and I was going to go ahead and give it a try so I gave it a try for a couple of months. This is not something that I otherwise would have picked up. I did enjoy this a lot more than I thought. It is an age gap romance between a girl and the father of her boyfriend. I actually thought it was pretty well done. I thought it was pretty steamy. True smut where it's just like sex every other page is not really my thing. So as much as I enjoyed this one and I have a positive reading experience with this, I feel okay letting it go. The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. I've mentioned this multiple times before but I have a very complicated relationship with Megan Miranda. For some reason I continue to go back to her books over and over and over again but they are only ever distinctly mediocre and I recently read her newest release The Only Survivors and that just was not great and I made the decision to give up. I'm not going to seek out any more Megan Miranda books in the future. I'm just going to go ahead and let it go. This was the only book of hers that I had on my shelves that I had not read yet so I'm going to go ahead and let it go. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I held on to this for a very long time. I think I first read it pretty close to when it was published in like 2018 and I have complicated feelings about it because the first half of the story I really enjoyed. It was kind of like a mystery as the main character was trying to solve what happened to her mother and her grandmother had written these very popular dark fairy tales and she's kind of being dragged back to her grandmother's estate and the hinterland which is where the fairy tales were set and then the second half of the book completely lost me because it was very abstract very fairy tale like and y'all know that I have problems with that. So I don't remember like half of this story because it went very much over my head but I did keep this because overall I felt like the writing was great and like I said the first half of the book really did it for me. She has since come out with like a follow-up to it I believe and I'm not going to read it and so if I'm not going to read it I'm not going to continue with the series. I don't remember half of the book. I think it's okay if I let it go. Hyperbole in Half by Ali Brosh. This is another book that I picked up purely to satisfy a reading challenge of reading a book written by a comedian. Ali Brosh is best known for her blog where she talks a lot about mental health and she's very very funny and this book is primarily entirely written in these little cartoons. So this is basically how it was written and I laughed out loud at a lot of the stuff that I read in here. There was one story particularly regarding a goose that I just was crying. I was laughing so hard. So this is certainly well worth the read but again it's a one-off story. It's not something that I'm 
ever going to revisit and I feel like if I really was craving her content that I could get a lot of it online. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. Ah, okay, here we go. The Illumicrate editions of the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. I absolutely love these editions. They are definitely very bright blue, purple, spacey kind of theme. Silver foiling. They are absolutely stunning and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them because I'm not going to finish the series and I will probably never pick up anything by Olive e. Blake in the future. So these are gonna go. Next I have I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This is another YA book that I read many years ago and it's just been sitting on my shelves and I have no emotional attachment to it. There are still very specific things that I remember about it but this is another one that I really don't have any emotional connection to at this point and I think I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. Shanghai Immortals by A.Y. Chow. This is the Fairy Loot Special Edition, another one that came in my adult book only subscription and this is another one that I just have no interest in reading. This is another one that is either already on Pango or will be on Pango soon if you are interested. All right y'all we are finally getting down to the last handful of books. Next I have the Fairy Loot Special Edition of The City of Dusk by Tara Sam and this is just one that I've made the hard decision to let go not because I'm not interested in it but because I have to be very very selective about the thick fantasy books that I start. I like to immersive read those meaning I want to sit down and read it with my eyeballs and listen to it. Y'all know that I very rarely am able to sit down and physically read anything and I have to have the time and the mental energy to do that and so because of that I can only read a handful of chunky fantasies every single year and there are still so many that I'm dying to read and this is just not a top priority and because I don't know when or if I will ever get to it I think it's prudent for me to go ahead and let this one go so that's what I'm gonna do. Next I have Signal Fires by Denny Shapiro. This was a very very small literary fiction type story and I did not like it. I didn't think it was well executed. I really didn't enjoy it at all and so it is an easy unhaul for me. Next I have House Rules by Jodi Picoult. I'm not getting rid of this because I didn't enjoy it. I actually really enjoyed the story but this is still not one that I look at and I have strong emotional attachment to. So it was just kind of sitting on my shelves because I have other Jodi Picoult on my shelves and I'm trying not to do that. I'm really trying to keep only books that I absolutely love, have very vivid memories of, have very strong emotional opinions about and this is not one of them. Next I have The Deal by L. Kennedy. This is just a romance series that I've made the decision not to continue with. I should have the mistake here as well but I don't know where it is. So if I can find it it will definitely be up on Pango but this one is gonna go. And then the very last two are actually books that go together. One is the first book in a series and one is the prequel that was released after the first book in the series. We have Preset and Reset both by Serena Dolan. These are dystopian kind of stories that I received as part of an unplugged book box. I was very very briefly trying that subscription. These came in the very first box that I received and I really was not impressed by any of the items and definitely not by these books. They are stunning. I really really enjoy the covers and stuff of the books but this is just not something that I'm ever ever really going to want to read. I instantly basically put them in my unhaul pile but these have been up on my Pango for quite a while so if you were interested they are there for you. All right everybody that is it. Those are all of the books that I'm unhauling today. This like I said is an unhaul that is the product of several months and y'all know that I have been working very very hard to be extremely intentional about the books that I bring into my home and I'm a lot better about that now but as you can tell from this unhaul there are still several books in here that I made the decision to unhaul without reading and I really don't want to do that. So even if there's a hint of doubt in my interest in a book I'm not going to be bringing it in. So I'm hoping in 2024 a lot of the books that I unhaul are just books that I really didn't enjoy and I don't feel the need to keep them on my shelves. But anyway please like I said comment down below about some of the books that I discussed that I might be willing to change my mind on like The Stolen Air by Holly Black, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Please feel free to leave those comments down below. Let me know some of the books that you have unhauled recently or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and of course leave me a book stack emoji in honor of the very many book stacks that are surrounding me that you cannot see. Y'all know that I appreciate your comments so so much. I love seeing them and they help my channel immensely. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Bookmas meaning from December 1st through December 25th you should be seeing one upload from me every day hopefully and if you don't want to miss any of that content please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Y'all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I've discussed in the video except for this video because I am not about to list and link every single book that I am unhauling. I will go ahead and leave a link to my Pango down below in the description and like I said you will see these steadily pop up on Pango over the coming weeks. Hopefully I can get it done before the end of the year that's my goal but until next time y'all.